So welcome to this fun little tutorial. Today we're going to talk about um, kind of intuitive painting and also how you can be intentional with intuitive painting, which actually sounds kind of counterintuitive, but um, it's not. Um, so what I have planned for this little piece of paper, uh, and I'll go over the supplies in just a second, is um, we're going to splash around some inks and we'll kind of let that... Um, the ink tell us what it wants to be. I do know, I kind of have in mind, and this is the intentional part, I have in mind um, a little jar with some flowers in it, and I'm going to keep it really basic. And this kind of uh, painting is really fun when you don't know what to paint. You just kind of let the colors and the patterns that the ink or watercolor makes um, direct the painting. And I'm going into it with an idea that I want to paint flowers in a jar. So I'm going to kind of rearrange my colors um, in that way. And it'll be a little bit easier to pick out um, some flower shapes and stuff. So let's talk about the supplies. So I've got a, a watercolor sheet here taped down to a, this is just a plastic cutting mat. And I always flip it over. Um, and I've got paper towels. Obviously, we're going to be playing with ink, so it's going to get messy. I've got this taped down with painter's tape, um, just so that we have a nice clean edge when we're done. And I'm just using this Canson watercolor paper. It's 140 pounds, and this one is uh, 7 by 10, so nothing huge. And then I have several different inks here, and these are all by Bombay. They're all India ink. Um, and the reason that I like using ink as opposed to watercolor is is once it's down on the paper it's not going to move so if you um, apply something over it it won't shift around with the paint which is actually what we're going to do so i've got a couple of brushes these are just really um like little cheapy brushes that um i have for acrylics or whatever so I'm not really particular with any any size. We'll probably go back in later and that's what maybe we'll pull out a couple smaller brushes or something. And I also have a piece of, this is just a, a disposable palette. It's essentially just wax paper. So if you've got wax paper, grab some and um, we'll put our acrylic paint down on this. And that's the next thing that I've got is this Artist Loft, which is, I think I bought this at Michael's Craft Store. Whatever um, inexpensive white acrylic paint you have, I would suggest using something that's a little bit of a heavier body, uh, simply because with craft paint, you may have to go over it a couple of times uh, to get the look that we're going for. So I also have some of these uh, little mini misters and we'll be using that to kind of push the, the ink around a little. Uh, if you wanted to grab some salt, uh, you can do that too. If you're looking to um, have some texture in your work, which is something that um, I think I might do because I want the bottom of the jar to have kind of a watery feel. So I'll either go back in and drop some water or maybe lay some salt in there. So. That is essentially all that you need, um, I think, for now. And as we get further into this piece, I might pull out some other supplies and, and we'll talk about those as we go through. But you know, um, with with painting like this, just grab whatever you have on hand. Uh, it'll, it'll make it unique to you for sure. So we're gonna get started by grabbing uh, some inks. And I'm going to kind of stay a little bit on the, as far as my flowers go anyway, I'm going to do maybe some pinks and purples. Um, that's just kind of the palette that I've always loved. Um, purple and green, that's my thing. But you do what you do. Uh, I know that I'm going to go in and add some greens down here for stems. And this is going to be completely random. I'm not going to try and control anything. So... I do just want to say before we start laying in inks that if you choose two colors that are complementary colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, um, like an orange and a blue, or let's say a yellow and a purple, um, I would suggest laying in whichever color you're working with, letting it dry, 
and then going back in and laying in the opposite color simply because if they run together they'll make mud and it's a great way to tone a color down um, but if that's not the effect that you're looking for my suggestion would be just pick pick a warm side the warm side of the, the uh, color wheel or the cool side of the color wheel and keep them in the, their own separate areas and you should be okay so if you're you know if you want to do yellow and red flowers and you want to put the green at the bottom just don't you know let the red and the green intermingle or you're going to get uh brown there are some beautiful neutral colors that it makes but that's kind of like not what we're going for in this but so i'm gonna start and i'm just gonna grab one of these little misters and i'm gonna spray it just on my paper And I think I'm going to start with the pink and give this a good shake. And I am, you know, just going to start dropping um, some of this ink in. And there we go. And one of the reasons that I um, choose to tape this to um, a mat um, you know, either a plastic cutting board, a piece of glass or something like that is so I can move this around and just let the inks kind of go where they want. And I'm going to add some purple in here. I think I may add a little bit of blue at the bottom. Just a little and um, start spraying this some more. And this is the fun part actually. This is the part that I really like. Um, yep, yeah, so I'm just going to let this kind of run all over the paper. And at this point, you know, we're not really, tr we're not trying to control this. We're just spraying and seeing if we can get some good color bleeds in there and some drips and some runs and some really neat uh, textures like this. And I think I may add just a little bit. I might add a little bit of green here. And give it a, oops, give it a spray. And something that, um, I like to kind of be aware of is not letting the colors totally blend together. Like this area right here to me is, it's beautiful. Um, and when you start taking the mat, moving it around, you end up getting the colors all mixed together. And I like to see a little bit of a variety in the colors that I've laid down. So something like this, and I've got some pooling right here, which I'm going to leave. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some salt into this, and then we're going to have to let it dry. And then if you want to add any extra colors, um, you can do that after, after this layer dries. And I'm just going to go and kind of mop this up by sticking a corner of my paper towel in here. Okay, I'm gonna um, go find my salt and uh, lay some of that. Make sure that the areas are still really wet when you lay the salt in.
Okay, and I might just go in with a little bit of my Navy Grab Around brush. Just something, this is not even a round brush. I don't know what that is. Anyway, I'm just going to add a couple little drops of water in here. And the salt's going to kind of have the same effect too. But the salt that I'm using, I think, is uh, like Himalayan pink salt, and it's really tiny. So I don't think it'll, it's not going to make um, big blooms like that. And let's see, get this pooling out of here. And I think at this point, I'm just going to kind of splatter some water in there to give us a little bit more texture. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna sop some of this up and we're going to let this completely dry. And then when I come back to this, we'll decide whether or not we want to add another layer of ink. Okay, so this is dry and I've rubbed all of the salt off of it. And you can see how this Himalayan salt, it's kind of fine, um, left these little textures. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add a little bit more green, I think. And it doesn't matter if the entire page is covered up with color because we're going to go back in with white acrylic paint kind of carve out our flowers and our base. So, but I think I just wanted to add maybe a little bit more pink and a little bit more green. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'm just going to kind of play around a little bit and then we'll do the whole process again. I'll let it dry and then we'll come back. So I'm going to start off with some of this green. And I think I'm gonna wet my paper first. And one thing I do wanna say, if, if you do plan on using um, some salt, um, it's always good to let it dry naturally. Uh, give it a couple of hours. I hit mine with a blow dryer, but be careful because when you rub the salt off, sometimes the ink or the paint stays wet underneath the salt and then you risk, um, you know, when you brush it off, kind of smearing the paint underneath. So just be mindful of that. And these might make really good, um, you know, leaves or other little green things. And now that my pink is dried, I don't run the risk of um, having the two colors bleeding together. And you can kind of see what happens when it's overlaid, um, what color it would make. And I can just wipe that away or blot it up with a paper towel, which is something I might do. This is like a really, really um, bright green. So I think what I might do, I mean, that's like a spring green. I might go in here and kind of drop some purple just to kind of dull that green down a little because I don't want it in your face. I like this green over here and even this down here, not so much. It's a little, a little too bright in your face for me. I'm just gonna kinda do that, sop some of this up. And 
and I'm out of juice on that one. I always make sure that I have a couple of these. And I like these because they're such a um, it's such a fine mist. And I feel like um, when I have color all over the paper, I have more options as far as um, pulling out shapes. So I actually like to try and cover the entire paper with ink. I am dropping in another color and if you do that, just try to add it in a couple of different places so that you don't have this isolated color off to itself because then that becomes kind of the focal point of the piece. And uh, that's not what I'm going for here. I might add a little bit more of that in a couple spots in here. I like to be kind of quick with the sprayer just because I don't want it to dry as a solid mass of color. There, I kind of like that. So now we have some, um, some options in here and some different colors happening. And I like what's going on over here. So I will let this dry again, and when we come back, we can start kind of carving out um, the shapes of our flowers and stuff. This is dry now, and I really like the way this is starting to look. And before we move on to um, carving out our flowers with our acrylic paint, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, composition as far as... Um, creating um, a bouquet and a vase and and really it's you know kind of the same concepts for pretty much everything and I'm not going to draw on this but I'll give you a, an idea and you can definitely um, go to Pinterest and all right I've got a scratch piece of paper here go to Pinterest and start looking at uh, bouquets and Look at different types of jars and just look at the general overall shape. So, you know, you can you can think about a round vase and maybe, um, you know, the bouquet looks something like this. You know, that's the shape. And maybe there's a couple of uh, taller elements and maybe something down here that creates a little bit of balance. Um, what I've chosen to do is I like the mason jars, so it'll be a rectangular shape that I have. And then I kind of want to keep it um, a little bit low, I think, and something like that that almost looks like a, a tree. I was looking at a lot of uh, vases that had peonies in it, and I think that was kind of the direction I wanted to go, you know, but, you know, to start thinking about these kinds of shapes and, and because that's pretty much what we'll be working with. We're not going to get super intricate. You can, at the very end, go in and add some little details and stuff with um, a pen or a pencil, maybe a white gel, gel pen, which is maybe what I might do. Or you can go in with watercolor, and I'll show you how to do that at the end, too. Um, I like the way that this looks and that it's really loose and... I feel like when you start adding uh, pen work and black lines, it turns it into something a little more graphic and it kind of flattens the image and it doesn't become uh, this loose kind of ethereal thing. So I'm gonna um, probably not work with a black pen, but feel free to if that's what uh, you like, if that's the look that you like, definitely do it. But I'm gonna uh, probably, I don't think my pencil will show up very well on this, so I'm gonna grab a white charcoal pencil 
And this is usually how I start mapping out what I'm gonna do. I know that this right here is gonna be the jar and I can't see that, so I'll switch back to a pencil. So this is gonna be the jar and I do want a bottom on it. I don't want it to run clean off the, the page. So I'm gonna make it kind of short and I hope you can see this. I mean, it's like super, super light. Um, but just start kind of mapping in so you have an idea of where you're going with this. And I like to do the same thing for um, the flower shapes. And I really like all of this that's happening down here. And I, like I said, I am not, not drawing a flower. I'm just... Um, looking at where the colors intersect with each other and whether or not I have hard edges like here. So I kind of want to let the ink do the talking for me because that's really the whole idea behind this. And I think one of the reasons that it looks so special. And to me, this looks like, I mean, this looks like the center of a flower. So if I later decide that I want to accentuate that, what I would probably do is just um, differentiate between the petals a little bit, and then I'll probably uh, go in and have some sort of a stem right here. But this is where you just kind of start mapping out, um, mapping out your flowers and the shapes that you see. And and also your your composition and how you want this to look. So, as I'm looking at this, I really kind of like this area up here. And I don't know, and you can always change things too. So when you're going in with your acrylic and you're painting around all of this, um, you can definitely uh, change, change things for sure. And you'll see when you start adding in the paint, um, if you're a little bit more conservative at first and you don't carve way into it, um, you can always add more, add more, add more. Obviously you can't subtract, so um, something else to keep in mind. And I'm not so sure about these uh, drips over here. I'll probably cover those up. Um, but I like these little bits kind of over here. And this would make a really great leaf shape, I think. Yeah, so I'm just going to annotate that. And... We can use our watercolor paint or more inks to kind of separate these out also. And the nice thing about using um, this white charcoal pencil is that I can very easily um, lift it out. I just need to find an eraser. So if there's something that you don't like, you know, I gen generally don't like to scrub with this. I'm always afraid it's gonna pick up some of the ink. And so you can just kind of lift it out like this. And I can also take a wet brush and kind of go in there and get rid of it like that and then just dab it up with a paper towel. So those are two options. So after I go in here and kind of block out these flowers, I look at the overall shape, you know, like, do I like this? Do I like the way this is looking? Um, you know, and this is the opportunity to, um,
So as I'm looking at this, um, this is kind of showing through and I'm going to see what it looks like if I just go around this and, you know, maybe that's another flower in the background. I don't know. And if I like it, I mean, I can always go back in with watercolor and kind of darken up those areas. And that might be something that I keep. So I like to be a little bit, a little bit more on the conservative side at first, kind of see where this is going. And then um, I can always go back in with more white paint. This is actually a really good exercise in um, composition and lost and found edges and color. And it's an intuitive thing too, which is what I, which is what I really love about this. And I don't know if I'm going to keep that or not, but I'll leave it for now. So I think I'm going to let this dry and I'll probably take a picture of it with my phone and kind of look at it and then maybe start um, going in with a little bit of watercolor when this dries and picking out some more shapes, a little bit more detail without overdoing it. So we'll see if that's a possibility. So, okay, when we come back, let's let this dry first. So this is dry now, and I actually didn't take a picture of it with my camera. I kind of stood up, um, put some distance between myself and the piece, and looked at it and decided to get rid of this down here and just make it a small leaf shape. And I also got rid of this flower because I didn't, this whole thing seemed to get too tall. Um, and I think I like it better now. And you can see over here, I've got my watercolors out. Now, this part of painting this is where you can kind of go in and do anything that you want to do. If you feel more comfortable using um, maybe colored pencils or you want to try some of those like aqua crayons, neo color crayons, or anything like that, I mean, this is where you can kind of let your imagination go wild. I'm gonna stick with watercolors because I wanna keep this just really um, soft. And I know that with the watercolors, I can, I can take it, it's like a slow buildup. And what I'll probably do is, I'm just gonna <clears throat> go in and Um, build up some of these darker areas in between the flowers so that it kind of separates them a little bit. And I love this palette. It's a little travel palette. It's made by Etcher Lab. And I'm, you know, not getting paid to say this. I just love these. These are porcelain. And they come with little felt pads that um, go in between and everything fits in this little case and it's perfect for traveling. So, um, so I'm just gonna make a, this is probably half paint, half water, and I'm probably gonna need to go a little bit darker than that because it gets pretty dark in here already. So I'm just gonna add, this is Moon Glow. A lot of these paints I have in here are from my Daniel Smith tubes. 
and I actually I put white in there too so I don't normally use white but it's kind of nice to have sometimes so I want to keep this just really you know kind of random and you can get a paper towel and you know I want to keep these edges soft the idea is just to add um, a little bit of a darker value so that we're separating these flowers but I don't want to commit like to a you know a super specific shape not not quite yet the idea is just to kind of go in here and separate these out a little bit maybe I can do something in here I'm not even sure you know I was thinking peonies um, possibly I might stick with that but it can definitely change for sure so I'm rinsing my brush and I'm just gonna go I'm cleaning the brush and it's still a little damp and I'm just gonna kind of run it along the edge here so I don't get a hard edge with the watercolor so I can kind of blend that out a little bit. Like I said, you can also go in here with colored pencils. Um, I like to do this with watercolor instead because the pencils that I have, I think I have, I have um, polychromos and I also have some, um, I can't remember the name of them, Prismacolors. <laughs> And the Prismacolors are a little bit waxier and it kind of um, adds a sheen to it. So I'm, when I do use the colored pencils, I try to be uh, really light handed with them. And this is just kind of a slow, a um, little bit of a slow process. And I think I'm gonna paint this flower back here a little bit darker. I think before, since this is a glass jar, um, before I add in the stems, I think what I want to do is find where my water line will be and that'll help, um, that'll help me to figure out where the, um, where the stems are going to be because usually when you have um, flowers in a glass jar, there's a little bit of that weird kind of uh, displacement with the glass. You know, you have the stems and then it looks like everything is shifted over once it hits the, or the displacement with the water. 
So we're going to find our water line and I'm going to use my, my white pencil again. And I think I'm going to go in here. And I like to just do like this ellipse. Um, regular pencil because it's kind of hard to see. Just remember that ellipses have rounded rounded edges and not um, pointed pointed edges. So that's going to give me an idea where my waterline is and I can make some very small marks with the white acrylic paint that'll make this uh, jar actually look like glass so um, so I want to add some stems in here you know I I'll just make sure you vary the angles um, funny I can't really see the graphite or the white pencil <laughs> so I think I'm just very lightly gonna go in here with some paint and I'm gonna draw the stem down to the water line and then I'm gonna stop And then before I draw straight through, I'm going to shift this over just a little bit. And that's how you make this really look like it's sitting in water. And once we add the white highlights with the acrylic paint, it'll read better. And of course we want to vary the thickness of some of these stems. And since I shifted this one over to the right, everything uh, past the water line is going to be shifted over to the right. And this may not be a very realistic painting, uh, but these little things like this, um, like I just can't help myself uh, try to keep that like as realistic as I can. And since my other stem over here is still wet, I'm going to be careful with anything else that I paint not to go right up to it um, so that it doesn't all bleed into each other. Even though they're the same color, I want there to be a little bit of a a um, little bit of a dif differentiation between the stems. Even though this one's going this way, I'm still going to shift it over this way. And these don't have to be perfect. I mean... You can also vary the color of these. So I just added a little bit more blue to that. And I might actually start up here.
I feel like this is a little bit. There we go. So it can get a little bit confusing when you're painting these, but that's fine. I just try to make sure that I'm varying, you know, maybe the size and the color just a little bit on some of these stems. That kind of bled in a little bit. Like I need one right here. Maybe another one over here somewhere. You know, and there's all sorts of distortion in, in the glass anyway, so if things get a little wonky down here, I wouldn't really worry about it. So I think that's pretty good. I am going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of blue and And I'm going to go ahead and outline. Very carefully kind of go along the edge here. And along the bottom. Because remember, I wanted to have a little bit of a differentiation there. I don't know why I keep saying that word. It's, it's like too hard for me. Um, So, I just want to darken this edge up. And like this is the bottom of the glass. So this kind of ellipse that sits down here, I'm just gonna 
you know, like make an indication of it. And I think something like that. I'm softening that edge a little bit. I think now what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I want to add in this water line by going, um, just a little bit darker and I hope that my my stems I think are dry and you can definitely do this with um like a colored pencil if you feel like it's more precise um, It's not the color. And I'm when I when I'm making this waterline, I'm not just drawing a line. I'm gonna do this kind of like um like dashed a little bit. I'm just kind of perfectly imperfect kind of thing. And I might darken up some other areas, maybe down here. I'm going to add a little bit right here because this leaf is hanging over and I just want it to be a little bit um, more in shade, I guess. I'm going to darken up some of these stems. I'm just kind of keep in mind which ones are in front, which ones are in back. Thing. So, so I think that's good for that. And when we go back in here and add some white highlights, that's when that will definitely pop. And I'm gonna soften this a little bit. That's my ink. I don't think that's going anywhere. I'm just darkening up some of these veins. I 
And I think now what I might do is go in, I don't really like this right here. Uh, I'm gonna go in and maybe start working on the shapes of the flowers a little bit. And it's always darker in the center. So I'll just randomly start adding in some dark areas. And I think I'm gonna keep this part here. This part is like a turned up kind of a leaf or petal. Um, it's just really about working with what's already there. So. The ink kind of does, kind of does the work for you, so. So I'm going to take a little bit of a step back from this and kind of let everything dry um, and then we'll come back in and maybe decide if we're going to add any more acrylic paint and some details maybe with a white gel pen. I know I'm going to go in here on the glass and add a couple of highlights and we'll go from there. So this is pretty much dry and I kind of stepped away from it. I did take a picture of it and decided that I really don't like the shape. I don't like what's going on up here and I really don't care for this flower. So um, a really great trick is if you have an iPad, well, iPads are the easiest to work with um, as far as editing goes, um, but you can pretty much do it with any sort of tablet. You can do this in Photoshop. It, it just takes a little bit more um, you know, if you're using a mouse or you've got like um, a, a Wacom tablet that you can work with, that's easy too. Um, I find the iPad is the easiest with the program Procreate. I can take a picture of this and then I can alter things in Procreate without having to mess up my picture, right? So I'll show you what I did. Here's my iPad. And I just kind of, I got an acrylic brush in here and I just made some modifications. And I think I like where this is going better. Um, I'm not super jazzed about the huge leaf, but we're going to leave that alone because I don't want to split that in two because I would have to figure out um, the jar and everything. So we're just going to leave that. And um, I'm going to go back in with some white acrylic paint and see if I can um, flesh out these shapes a little bit better like this. I just feel like this is a little bit too, um, I don't know, I want to say boring. I just didn't really care for it once I took a picture of it. 
and this this flower over here even though I really like what's happening I just it looks um, disjointed to me so and this is I think this is like the one thing that people um, don't really talk about a lot I guess with with artwork and and this is kind of just a fun little thing to do this intuitive we're not looking to um, create any sort of photorealistic um, flowers or anything like this this is just more of kind of a fantasy thing um, or an intuitive practice I guess you could say uh, but one of the things that that doesn't often get talked about is the problem solving that goes along with creating and the key is just not to get frustrated because there's usually a way to fix something. Don't wad up a piece and throw it in the garbage. I mean, if you really, really don't like something, the best thing to do is to save it and maybe rip it up and use it for a collage piece or cut it up and make bookmarks out of it. Do something with it. I mean, that's all part of, um, all part of the creative process really is, um, you know, the problem solving aspect of it. So now I'm going to see if I can carve this out in a way that I actually like that looks a little bit more like a peony. Uh, I think I'm going to just really go in here. And I really love this petal right here. Um, it's not like super jazzed with the rest of it. So and I kind of want these, those ragged looking um, edges because a peony, the petals have those jagged, uh, those really jagged edges. And I'm not even sure if that's what I'm trying to do over here. I'm just trying to build some shapes that are a little bit more interesting. Um, but I do know that I want to knock this one back a little bit. And I'm just doing that by wetting my brush. have put too much paint on there. I'm just going to take this little blender brush. Get rid of some of these edges. And I'm probably, I'm going to do the same thing with this flower. I'm going to knock this back a little bit. I think I'm going to shave this down even more. And don't be afraid to change something. Um, this is how you learn. And even if you feel like, oh, now this is like way beyond repair, just set it off to the side and come back to it the next day. And usually you can pinpoint, oh, you know, maybe if I just add this or that, I can get this to where I want it or where I like it. So I'm just kind of fuzzing out these edges a little bit. 
and let's see if I can get rid of this here. Okay. So now I've got a white spot in the middle of my flower. And All right, so I don't want to damage the paper. Let's see if this is possible. So I'm putting a little bit of ink in my palette and I'm gonna see if I can go over this at all, how this is gonna So that works. And this is what I mean. Um, if I hadn't made the mistake, then I wouldn't know, you know, that this is going to work. So there's always a learning opportunity in there somewhere. And I actually like that because it kind of punched up the color a little bit over here. And maybe I'll add a little... And if I get to the ink quick enough, I can blend it out a little. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and say goodbye to this guy right here. I'm liking this a lot better. Um, I feel like this one needs to be shaved down a little. Um, What I might do at the end too is might take my pencil or a pen and just add some little things coming out here and there.
Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush and I am going to pick up some watercolor, I think, and mix it into my acrylic. This same blue green kind of color. I've got my water placed in a really bad spot. So if you see me constantly reaching over, that should fix the issue. All right. So what I'm doing is picking up some watercolor um, that I have already in my palette. And add a little bit more to that. Just something that's a little close to what we've got going on down here. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of my acrylic. And I'm just tinting my acrylic, really. And... A little bit darker. And this is just going to be my. Oops, need something to ground this. Um, this jar. Then I can go back in with the white acrylic and kind of clean up the shape here. I like to add a little bit of the colors I have going on and the flowers down here too. And I think I wanted to Add a little bit of a, and I'm using a brush that's, you know, not meant for watercolor, but that's okay. I just wanted to put a little bit of a center and redefine some of these areas that I lost here on this flower. And I can just kind of scumble this in.
Okay, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to go back into my white acrylic paint. I'm going to thin it down a little bit and I'm going to add some of these highlights onto the jar. I'm gonna get a smaller brush and do a little bit of this waterline. And the thing is, is even though I've got the shadow going over here, that would suggest that the light's coming from the opposite side, but this part of the jar is kind of covered up by this leaf. So we're gonna just, you know, that whole artistic license thing and maybe Okay, I think I'll leave the jar like that. It's really easy to get carried away with the white. And I'm probably gonna hit this with a blow dryer and then I'm gonna get my white gel pen and we'll start going in and adding a little bit of detail and maybe, maybe I'll add in something um, with the black pen or I'm not sure yet. <laughs> we'll see, I'll be right back. So this is pretty dry. And I have my white gel pen here, and this is a Signo Uniball. Uh, this is a broad tip. This is not a fine tip. I do have several white gel pens. And my best advice is just to get gel pens and try them out. I mean, um, some will work over mixed media really well and some don't. So, I mean, I've got all sorts of stuff here. And um, I decided too that I wanted to play with a little bit of gold on this because I feel like it's, um, the colors are all very much the same. So I wanna break it up a little bit, maybe with some gold accents and I might do a little bit of white. And you can also refine your edges and stuff with um, a white gel pen. So let's say that, you know, I don't really like how rough it got or pointy or whatever. Um, I can I can kind of fix that. And you have a little bit more control um, with these pens. You know, and you can add, start cutting in like, like that.
And if I don't like it, I've got my wet brush. I can always just smudge this out. And there's it. Yeah. Like that. I'm blotted up. So really no mistakes with this. But I do know that I want to kind of go in here and um, to find some of these edges a little bit. Yep, I am taking my finger and kind of blending, blending these edges out. Maybe I want to go in here a little bit. And this is actually a really good time to kind of play. Um,
I don't want to go too crazy with the white, actually, because I know that I want to do most of the accents in gold. And adding in the, um, adding in some of these little branches and stuff that come out. So this is where I keep all of my metallic paints, my metallic watercolor. And this is a, a gold paint by Kremer Pigments. They're out of New York City. Um, and it's K-R-E-M-E-R -E -E if you want to check them out online. So I think... So it is going over the acrylic, but I mean, it's just kind of floating there. So. Which is okay. I'm just going to keep going with this. And. Yeah, as you can see, I'm not really loving this. 
on the white, obviously, because there's not a lot of contrast. So I'm just kind of wetting it down and wiping it off. I do like it as an accent for the flowers. Just not so much on the white part. Okay, so I still feel like I want to knock some of these flowers back just a little bit. And I have some transparent mixing white. And you can also water down your white acrylic. That'll work too.
Okay, you can see what I'm doing now. I've got my mechanical pencil, and this is a really small one. This is a 0 0.3. And I'm just going in here and adding some details to this. You can also go in if you want to um, add some, you know, marks around the edges to kind of define the edges. Mine is kind of dark. Um, and graphite has a sheen to it, so I don't want to go in a lot in in my flowers. Um, you can make some scribbly marks too. And I'm just looking for places to kind of add some um, some extra some extra details. You can always put this off to the side too and kind of look at it and see where you're at. I'm gonna add a couple of little white um, dots in here. And I, I'm not so sure I like the gold, really. Um, I may go back in here and just kind of smudge it out, at least on this leaf. It just has a gold sheen to it now. I think I like that better than the dots anyway, so. Um, same thing with these lines. I actually like it better with the gold sheen on it instead of the, um, the lines. So I'm going to hit this with a blow dryer one more time, and I already see something that I want to fix before I do that. Um, I'll take one more look at it and then probably call it done. Okay, so I'm gonna hit this with a blow dryer and then we'll take one last look at it and decide if we need to add anything else. And if not, it'll be time to peel the, the tape off. Okay, so I think I am done with this and we've got all sorts of stuff going on in here from 
pencil to ink to watercolor. And this is just a really fun way to play with all of the materials that you have. And without having to labor through sketching something out, um, and it's a good practice for intuitive, um, pulling out shapes intuitively. So we're going to go ahead and peel this off. And this is like always the best part anyway. of a sign in the corner and color done. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. It was a lot of fun for me and I haven't painted like this in a while. I think the last time that I did a uh, painting like this was uh, one of my mudra paintings and that's a little bit, it's a little bit more structured and I go into it a little bit more prepared um, what I like about this is the um, the intuitive aspect of it, where you put some ink down, maybe you have an idea of what you're going to do. I know that if I had done this, uh, if I do it again and I have this kind of flower vase thing in mind, I'm going to break up the colors a little bit more and try to get a little bit more of a variety uh, in the colors. I like what's going on down here. And as a whole, I like it. And I really like the... Um, the pencil in it. The gold I wasn't too uh, hip on, even though my mudra paintings have a lot of gold in them. Um, I actually prefer the um, the pencil marks to the gold in this one. And that's why we do this these type of projects to kind of work with our supplies, figure out what we like, what we don't like. And this is how you build a definite style. And also it gives you practice on using all of your supplies. So you know how they work together. And all of that combined is just um, a way to help you better express yourself in your artwork. So I hope you learned something. I hope you had a good time. That's, you know, the most important thing is to have some fun with this. And, um, I thought it was a lot of fun and it was really quite relaxing. So um, it's a totally stress-free way to create. Um, so I hope I see you on Instagram. Give me a follow on my um, Instagram page or on Facebook. It's Art by Monica. Visit me on my website. I am constantly posting new projects that I'm working on or updating the prints I have for sale. If you've got any questions, you know, feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram too. I love talking to people and, and meeting other creatives. So, um, uh, thanks for being here and I hope to see you soon.